Hello and welcome to the LLC Advantage. Today, I want to talk to you about wealth management and how it might fit into your overall financial needs. At LLC Private Wealth, we look at uh, we 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 treat our financial offers in uh, offerings in different pillars with different uh, different people on our team having specialties in different areas. Uh, and, and my my area of specialty is mainly. Uh, the wealth management side of things. Uh, I've been a portfolio manager for almost 25 years and been with uh, Canaccord Genuity uh, since 2006. Actually, one of their first portfolio managers uh, on board, uh, helping uh, build the platform here and and building how it fits into people's portfolios or, or their financial goals. Uh, we take a very comprehensive approach to wealth management. Uh, and, and one thing I want to stress, it's not an all or none strategy. It is, it's meant to combine the different strategies, the, uh, the, the different goals that you're going to have. Uh, of course, we look at financial planning, estate planning, uh, taxes is vital importance to consider in, in any portfolio strategies, but really risk management, uh, how you're using risk uh, to grow your uh, grow your investments or how you might not want to use risk depending on, on where you are and what stage you're at, uh, but how to blend it all together to meet those goals and meet those needs. Uh, my background, uh, I've, as I mentioned, I've been with Canaccord since 2006. I'm the only Canadian uh, or, or the only <laughs> the only Canadian for Canaccord to serve on our UK investment committees. Uh, that Those investment kid, committees run just over 50 billion in assets. Uh, they've been award winning uh, for many, many years. Uh, they've, they've done some, some fantastic work. And I think they bring actually... A, a, a institutional approach to individuals' needs. And we've been able to bring that back to Canada and, and create a portfolio solution where we can uh, give you a bespoke or tailor-made approach as opposed to kind of a general fund or, you know, you're just in a specific model, but actually bring portfolio management to your individual needs, uh, you know, without, uh, without giving up the institutional uh, benefits of, of having uh, a wealth manager, a portfolio manager, uh, helping you manage a component of your assets. Uh, I, as I mentioned, uh, also I was one of, or the first portfolio manager for Canaccord, so I've been instrumental in building out Canaccord's um, platform, including our external managers that are offered on our platform. Uh, so I, I've I've had years of doing due diligence on different expertise, different styles, uh, and how that that all comes together. Uh, to to meet an individual's needs or how we can bring it together to meet your needs specifically uh, in your investment uh, in your investment philosophy. Canaccord is a global company. We have, as I mentioned, our UK offices all over Europe, uh, Canada, the leading independents here in Canada. Uh, Australia uh, has been a growing factor for us, especially over the last five, six years. We're able to pull on all those resources to bring a really global approach. Uh, even if your portfolio is looking domestically, it's important to know what's going on around the world and how that's going to fit into things in the long term. Our approach is, is a bit different. If, if you've looked at wealth or uh, wealth management or you've used the wealth manager before, you might be used to what we call the benchmark approach. Uh, ours is very, very different uh, in, in the fact that we look at risks first in a portfolio. And, and I'll explain a little bit what, what that means, because it's really important to understand how the LLC advantage is different than, than uh, you might have seen out there before. So a benchmark approach, pretty simple. You pick a benchmark. It could be anything. It can be a blended benchmark. Uh, the easiest to talk about is you know the S&P, uh, S&P 500, uh, and say, okay, I'm going to be benchmark to the S&P 500, meaning I have to have weightings uh, of whether financials or whether it be technology, whether it be energy, uh, whatever the benchmark's weighting, if the benchmark's weighting is 10%, I should have 10% exposure to that, to that sector in my portfolio. Now, benchmark managers generally are allowed to overweight and underweight um, uh, their benchmark, but it's usually limited to 10, 10% of that. So, to vary uh, or to overweight or underweight a 10% exposure uh, by 10% means I can be up 1%, so 11% exposure, or down 1%. 
9% exposure, which really doesn't give you a lot of protection when it comes to volatility. And 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 what does that mean? Because volatility is a big part of your performance uh, in a portfolio, especially if you're, you're talking about, uh, you know, longer term investment goals. So just to give you an example, uh, and this is fictitious, uh, I'm just talking about the difference between a risk first or what we call a tactical approach uh, compared to a benchmark. So a benchmark approach would be if you start with a million dollars and right out of the gate, the market falls 20%, uh, your portfolio is going to go down to $800,000. In a tactical approach, the goals would be to pre prevent as much of a drawdown. So how can I limit my drawdown? Uh, using a tactical strategy. And, and let's say you manage to only go down by 5%. So you're still down to 950,000 at the bottom of the market. Now, when that market recovers, whether it's a month, month later or a year later, when that market comes back up that 20%, uh, that $800,000 investment, you're not hitting a, a new high. You're not back to a million dollars because you only had 800,000 working for you at the bottom. In fact, you're only at 960,000. So the market's fully recovered and you're still underwater in your portfolio. With a tactical approach, even if you only got 10% of that upside, so you didn't get the full 20, uh, you know, that first 10% of the market recovery, we might have seen, you know, heightened risks, heightened volatility. So the portfolio is still being cautious. So if you just got 10% of that upside, you're still at a million uh, forty-five thousand, so a brand new high in your portfolio. Uh, and and as the port the market continues to rise, uh, you know you're catching those returns, and you're you're moving ahead before the benchmark portfolio actually recover. So now that's that does I mention this is a fictitious example, just wanted to highlight the principle behind a risk first or volatile first type of strategy. So how does that play out in real life? Well, let's take a look at 2022, because it was a great example. In fact, during the year 2022, the S&P fell by 19.5%, uh, so almost your 20%. Uh, and by the early January uh, 2023, uh, the S&P was kind of uh, Approaching back to uh, to previous highs, so pretty much recovered. So let's take a look at our, our tactical portfolio, and I'm taking our risk profile six. Again, we tailor make these. I'll get more details in a moment, but our, our RP6 would be, you know, generally what people would call a balanced approach to a portfolio. So you've got fixed income, you've got equities, uh, and I picked two big uh, balance funds. I'm not picking on these shops, RBC Balance Fund and Fidelity. They're just two big, well-known ones out there. Uh, they've got long track records, so it was, you know, something yeah, people would be familiar with. And and I've plotted them out over that 2022 year uh, and how they performed. And you can see by the chart there, the black line at the top is our RP6 or our tactical approach. Uh, and, and sure, it saw drawdowns. It saw drawdowns of five points, I think it was 8.2% uh, or in that ballpark um, uh, when the uh, S&P was down almost 20%. Now you saw the other two portfolios, they, they're benchmark, they're benchmark funds. They took the full benchmark ride. They went down uh, and they started to recover. The, 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 as I mentioned, they're good shops, they're good managers, but the, 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 the benchmark approach is, is handcuffing their, uh, their managers to those, those weight-ins and they're not able to, to tactically uh, shift. And in fact, at the beginning of 2022, when inflation started rearing its ugly head really hard and really fast, and of course, we, we, that's where we saw the Ukraine war start, um, all that shifted our portfolios. We got to 34% in cash, uh, in, in, in cash, so or high interest investments uh, at the time. Um, uh, but we lightened off on the areas of the market that found that they were indicating through our process, higher risk that enabled us to take advantage of not going down as much, uh, and, and, Get in, get in that recovery. So we were at new highs before the end of the year and broaching uh, brand new highs in the portfolios well into January in the first quarter, uh, ahead by at least a quarter or two quarters before the other those other two portfolios managed to get back to a break-even stance. So that allows us to, to outperform. Now, this is 2022. We can graph this out through other years like uh, 2008 or 2020. And in fact, we're going to look at that through uh, the COVID or the, the pandemic start of 2020. Uh, and you'll see how the tactical approach can really, really uh, benefit 
your longer term returns. Uh, and here's no greater example is what does it mean to your to your uh, to your bottom dollar or what does it mean in your pocket? So taking a look at that RP6 portfolio again, a risk profile six uh, tactical approach. If you started in August 2019 with a million dollars in our portfolio, uh, you have analyzed almost 9%, uh, and that's through 2020 and 2022. Remember, sharp spike down in, in early 2020 and a big negative year for the markets in, uh, in 2022, still averaging 9%. Or sixteen million, or one point six million dollars, sorry, in your pocket at the end of the five years. If you would have been in those benchmark funds, the RBC and Fidelity, you would have seriously underperformed. In fact, you'd be almost three, or at the the high end, uh, three hundred thousand behind. So that means three hundred thousand dollars less in your pocket on that same initial million dollar investment. Uh, RBC did a little bit better, but two hundred forty thousand behind, but still. A big impact uh, on your uh, on your uh, on your wallet at the end of the day, your investable dollars, and um, and and reaching those financial goals, whether it be retirements, um, other other investments like buying more real estate or anything, uh, kids' education, whatever it might apply to your particular situation. It's important to, you know, sometimes we get lost in the percentages, but when you look at the underlying dollars, it's important to see what what you're missing out on when you're taking that full risk ride. And what, and what I mean by that full risk ride, this is a chart I really love because almost every benchmark uh, manager has used it in its history at some point. And it always tells you, you know, stay fully invested, you know, if you look at this is MCI, MSCI World Index, uh, and if you uh, if you just stayed invested over this whole period, and this goes from 2000 to 2015, um, it went through a bunch of crises, which is why I like this this particular time period to look at uh, for from a chart. You know, we had 08, we had all those other things, and you can see by the dark line if you if you just stayed invested, you would have made money. You'd be up into the positive territory, uh, and you've been doing great. But if you just missed the 10 best weeks, so if you panicked and got out of the market for just the 10 best weeks, uh, and this is what these benchmark managers will tell you, is stay invested, buy and hold, um, because you don't want to miss out. But So you stayed in just the 10, if you missed just the 10 best weeks, uh, you'd be way down there in the negatives on the gray line. You know, quite a quite a different variance in, in performance. And, and, and this is where they advertise to stay in their fund or stay in their portfolio, you'll do you'll do well. What I like to look at is what though, what if we missed the 10 worst weeks? And if we missed the 10 worst weeks, this is the dark line way up here, uh, how much better you would do uh, than just the index, just by missing out of those big drawdowns. Because the moment your portfolio draws down, you have less capital working for you to rebound. Now, it's great if you've got extra cash to throw in and take advantage of it. Uh, but if you, you're pretty much fully invested and you go for that full ride, you're giving up on a lot of returns, which is why we focus on that that risk first. We try to de-risk when when uh, areas of the markets are, 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 are offering not enough uh, return for the amount of risk that, that are in them. We'll, we'll back off and uh, or the process will back us off from uh, putting more money in those areas. We'll start to trim profits out of those areas and try to seek safer harbors, different areas in the market, different sectors, different geographies, whatever might be offering a better yield for uh, for the, the risk that we're taking. Now, sometimes we can't, the, the process doesn't identify anything and that's where we end up in cash. Um, and and in, in 2000, uh, late 2007, early 2008, the portfolio actually got as high as 65% in cash because it couldn't find a safe harbor. Uh, and it managed to weather that 2008 storm really, really well because of that process. Now, how do we do that? What's our process? Well, we use a very vigorous screening process. It's based on quality of balance sheet. Uh, we look at income statement uh, strength. Cash flow is king when we're looking at our, our, our different uh, screening process. Processes. We look at uh, the company's cash flow, the strength of the cash flow, their ability to duplicate that cash flow, but also very importantly, their ability to grow that cash flow. We definitely look at sectors. We looked at sectors, micro and macro components. We look at headwinds, tailwinds uh, to see uh, 
where where we see strengths there. We do a bottom up a fundamental research. Uh, we look at uh, correlations between asset classes. Uh, we do a full review uh, of of all the names in there. We use uh, a great quant model that Can Canaccord built uh, in, through our UK office, in fact, uh, called Quest. We use an external uh, technical uh, screeners, uh, and we also use third-party research to back up all our our, uh, our views and, and data to ensure that what we're looking at, um, we're not being biased by anything internal. Uh, we're looking for that the correlation across all our different screens. Then we take that and we do the same thing with asset allocation, looking at, again, the micro outlook, the macro outlook. Uh, we, we look at those asset classes, headwind, tailwinds. We really look at the correlation between asset classes because what we tend to see is correlation breakdown uh, as, as risk starts to mount in, in a market. So, um, you know, if two asset classes that normally uh, act separately from each other, you know, good, the, the classic example of that, of course, bonds and stocks uh, generally are negatively correlated. Uh, but when they start to positively correlate, uh, correlate beyond their normal ranges, the market's starting to tell you that the risk reward is, is, is starting to get stressed. It's, it's starting to get to a point where um, you could see higher pullbacks than than potential gains and and that that's really at the top of our triggers uh, of looking at uh, at risk in things uh we look at consensus weightings or we look at all the different weighting recommendations again we use third party we have internal strategists we have those uk committees i talked about um and and, and we look for that consensus uh, to see if there's any outliers and why why someone out, have an outlying opinion uh, and and try to really identify again where the risks lie. We uh, we we look geographically across the uh, around the world rather, uh, and and we're not tied to sector weightings. So unlike those benchmarks, if we don't like a sector, we can go to zero on it. Um, we're tactical. Uh, doesn't mean we always go to zero on a sector. We might still want to maintain a weight, and even if we don't have a high positive uh, view on it, it it. Uh, but we're not stuck to one up, up or down one percent. If we want to slash the sector in half, we can. Uh, if we want to increase cash, or if the, the process is telling us to increase cash, we do. Uh, and, and we're constantly reviewing the, this uh, this outlook to to adjust. Uh, as the markets and as the economies around the world change. So how do we build that that tailor-made or that bespoke uh, position? Well, we basically create what we call sleeves. We create individual portfolio focus portfolios. We have a cash portfolio, which is basically just looking for uh, high liquid cash returns. Uh, it could be GICs, uh, it could be T-bills, it could be money markets. It depends uh, what's paying the highest in there. Uh, we have a fixed income uh, sleeve or portfolio, which is, of course, focused solely on those cash components plus using bonds. Uh, we have the Canadian equity uh, component or, or, or portfolio that slowly looks at Canadian equities, we have a global, it's a US dollar base, but a global portfolio or and a, an all cap portfolio, a bit more torquey, a bit more higher returns, a bit more volatility in the all cap, not for everyone. Some people really love it. Um, and, uh, and, and as I've kind of got them here in this graph on a risk reward graph, Keep in mind, these are just indicative returns. These are not exact returns to uh, to that particular graph. The idea: the more risk you take, the more return you're going to get. Uh, but we can take we can take those individual portfolios and build you your own risk profile, or build a profile that's tailored to you, uh, where it'd be a component of some, all, one, any amount, whatever. Again, whatever is appropriate to you, where we come up with that. Uh, combined portfolio uh, that's going to meet your needs. It's going to meet your growth expectations or growth targets um, or target, sorry, your growth expectations. Um, and uh, and at the same time, provide you that risk first tactical approach that, uh, that we believe everyone should have in their overall uh, investment approach. Uh, we do have, you know, as I mentioned, the different risk profiles, one, two, three, four, six, seven, uh, custom. Uh, we have different uh, neutral weightings that, uh, that, you know, may apply to you, may not apply to you. 
uh, that we put together for 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 people. If you have some smaller portfolios, uh, we do have an ETF version and it uses the same asset allocation, just not the individual stock selection. Uh, these are not funds. You actually own the individual positions within each of those portfolios. Uh, and uh, and of course, we, we amalgamate it all into one portfolio so you can see what your overall performance and um, portfolio is doing. As I mentioned before, uh, we are we are driven by the uh, the the access that we have to global resources to be able to pull all this together um, and and make it happen in, within your portfolio. So with that, I just wanted to say thank you for listening. Uh, if you want more information, please please reach out to us. Our emails llc at cgf.com. Uh, you can reach me at mikeonmoney.com. Give us a call. Happy to look at your current portfolio. Happy to look at your current investment strategies uh, and just take a look at how it's doing, how it's uh, working towards your investment goals. And, and is, there, uh, is there something uh, we can help you improve or help you get, uh, get to where you want to go in a more efficient manner? So with that, thank you, everyone. Uh, enjoy your day and looking forward to talk to you soon. Bye now.